These notes go with section 3.7 in the algebra text and cover the subject of percents. First, let's look at this from a vocabulary standpoint. Let's take the word percent and break it up into its parts. The per part means for each or for every. For example, if we say milk costs $2.43 per gallon, that means that it, that's how many dollars it costs for each one gallon. If we say that the income per capita of the U.S. is higher than in India, that means that the income for each person, capita is a word that means each person, per head or per person, so the income per person in the U.S. is higher than in India. So that per means for each or for every. The cent word, as we know from science, refers to 100. So a century is 100 years. There are 100 cents in one dollar. There are a hundred centimeters in one meter. So per cent then, per means for every and cent means hundred. So percent means for every hundred. So for example, if we said 50 percent, that means 50 for every hundred of something. So 50 out of every hundred, we can think of this as a fraction, 50 out of every hundred, or 50%. We can think of percents as equivalent fractions. What's special about the percent fraction is that it has a denominator of 100. So for example, here's a fraction 10 over 20. We know that this simplifies to a half, but we can write it as a fraction with a denominator of 100. If we write it as an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 100, the numerator is 50, so 50%. One half is the same thing as 50%. 10 out of every 20, in this case, is the same ratio as 50 out of every 100. Similarly, I can think about a whole slew of different equivalent fractions. 40, 20, or sorry, 4 twentieths, 4 out of every 20. That's the same thing as 1 fifth, 1 out of every 5. That's the same thing as 12 sixtieths. That's the same thing as 300 15 hundredths. And all of these are the same thing as 20 one hundredths. All of these fractions are equivalent. The last fraction in the list, 20 over 100, is a percent fraction. 20 over 100, 20 for every 100, 20%. So all of those fractions are equivalent to 20%. Next, let's think about percents and decimals. The first decimal shown here, 0 0.63, if we speak that aloud, we would say that it is 63 hundredths. So we can turn the decimal into its fraction form quite quickly, and we see that it has a denominator of 100. So this is the same thing as 63%. So 0.63 is equivalent to 63 hundredths, which is equivalent to 63%. We can have decimals that are larger than 1, 2.63. We can convert those into improper fractions that have denominators of 100, so 263 hundredths, which is the same thing as 263%. It's okay to have percents that are larger than 100%. That just means that we have more than one whole. Next, we'll look at percents as proportions. And here's an example. If you earned 13 out of a possible 15 points on a test, how would you express your score as a percent? Well, first, let's write the 13 out of 15 as a fraction, 13 out of 15. And we want to know, what is that as a percent? In other words, what's an equivalent fraction that has 100 as its denominator? What does the numerator have to be? That numerator is going to be our score as a percent. If you remember what we did in previous sections, when we had proportions like this, we could use the cross product to solve this for x to find out what percent 13 out of 15 is. So we would multiply the first cross product, 13 times 100, and we would set that equal to the other cross product, 15 times x. And then to get x all by itself, to solve for x, we would divide both sides of this by 15. On the right-hand side, 15 over 15 would just be 1, so the right-hand side of this equation would simplify to just 1x, or x. 
And on the left-hand side, we'd have 13 times 100 over 15. At this point, if we were to bust out our calculator and take 13 and multiply it by 100, and then take our answer and divide it by 15, we would see that this comes out to 86.6 repeating percent. So the numerator of our fraction would be 86.6 repeating. So if you scored 13 out of 15 on a test, that's an 86.6 repeating percent. Or that would round to an 87, or B plus. So you may be looking at this and wondering, wait a minute, that's an awful lot of steps and they seem very confusing. I thought that we could just take the top number and divide it by the bottom and then move the decimal over two spaces to turn a fraction into a decimal. Well, you can, and when you're doing that, it's a shortcut to part of the steps that I showed you on the previous slide. So one of the steps that we had in the previous slide looked like this. 13 times 100 divided by 15 equals x. We could do the 13 divided by 15 part. That's taking the top number and dividing it by the bottom, 13 out of 15. And then we could do the multiplying by 100 part. When you multiply by 100, you move your decimal to the right two spaces. Top divided by bottom times 100 will give you a percent. The shortcut comes directly from using cross products to solve for the percent. All right, so one of the hardest things about percent proportions is setting them up, getting the right numbers in the right places. So here's an example. It says 23 is 40% of what number? Now you can see the answer is down below there. Let's see how we get to that. We're going to think first about the easy parts of this equation. The is in the verbal expression represents the equal sign. Two things are equal to each other. We would say 23 is the same as 40% of what number? 40% is also a pretty easy part of this expression to write. 40%, 40 out of 100, 41 hundredths. So all we're left with then is the 23 and the of what number. The what number part is going to become our x. And the 23, we're looking for 23 out of how many is 40%. So the 23 goes in the top, and the x, the thing that we're trying to find, goes on the bottom. Now, we can use our cross products. 23 times 100, we set that cross product equal to 40 times x, 40x. We'll divide both sides by 40, and we'll solve for x. And in this case, when we take 23 and multiply it by 100 and divide our answer by 40, we get 57.5. It's okay that our answer is not a whole number, that it's not an integer. This is okay. Sometimes the answers that we get when we're working through percent problems are going to be decimal percentages and they're going to be decimal whole sets, and that's fine. So in this case, we come to the conclusion that 23 is 40% of the number 57.5. One last example. If I were to ask you, what is 35% of 200? The what part is going to be our variable, so that's going to be our x. The is 35%, the is is the equal sign, and 35% is 35 one hundredths of 200. So in this case, the whole set that we're looking at has 200 in it. So our denominator is going to be 200. We'd like to know how many out of 200 is the same as 35 out of 100. How many out of 200 is 35%? Now we can use cross products to solve this. We'll multiply x times 100 and set that equal to 200 times 35. We'll solve for x in this case, and we'll get that x equals 70. So what that means is that 70 is 35% of 200. So 70 out of every 200 is the same as 35 per 100, or 35%.